So the hate you give, and I'm very happy to be on the show when this film is coming out because I love to talk about teen movies. I think we always underestimate their importance because they come out, you know, at a time in your life when a little bit of guidance can make a world of difference. And to see a film like this that engages in real experiences, you know, it just makes me want to scream from the rooftops about how great it is. And I do kind of want to scream from the rooftops about the hate you give because it's a film that is just so honest about the stuff that we know that black teenagers, specifically in the USA, they have to deal with these things, they have to worry about these things, but the mainstream media so rarely acknowledges that. And so, for example, you have the opening scene where our hero star, played by Amanda Stenberg, has the talk, which for white teens, that has one meaning, that is the birds and the bees. But the talk, you know, for parents of black children is also the talk where you have to sit them down and tell them what to do and how to act if you're stopped by the police. And so the catalyst in this film is that Star's childhood friend, Khalil, played by, played by Algie Smith, is shot by a policeman when his car has been pulled over. And that is a, it's an image that is familiar and, and heartbreaking and enraging for the audience to see. And so what is so effective about this film is that it explores that wider conversation, but it also hones in on the personal experience. And so on one hand, you have you hear from an activist played by Issa Rae, who, in, and also from the point of view of a cop played by Common, who is, she, um, he is Star's uncle. And so you're seeing these different perspectives. And there's one scene where she sits down with her father and they deconstruct the title of the film, which stands for Thug Life, which was the group that Tupac Shakur founded. And they sit down and they deconstruct what that title means. And we have a clip of that scene. Trying to make some sense out of it. It's Thug Life. The hate you give little infants. F's in. everybody. I know what it stands for. What do you think it means? I think it's about us. Us who? Black people. Poor people, everybody at the bottom. All right, you want it? Pac was trying to school us on how the system's designed against us. Why else you think so many people in our neighborhood deal? They need the money. Yeah. And they no real jobs around here. So they fall into the trap. Can I just tell you that uh, thug, Indian word, oh. comes from India. Oh, well, they don't discuss that. No. Oh. No, there's no I point where they say, thug, <laughs> Indian. Yeah. They don't say it. <laughs> no. Well, that can be one point against it. But, you know, they are having these direct conversations about discrimination and police brutality. But I think the mistake with this film is would be to assume that it has all the answers. Instead, it's reflecting the conversations that teenagers are either having or the conversations that they want to have and are maybe not having the opportunity to have those conversations. And, you know, it's about acknowledging a reality. And in this case, it stars reality. You know, someone who's having to process a traumatic event as a teenager while also learning about the power of her own voice, because there are certain people who don't want her to speak out about it at all. There are people who want her to speak out in certain ways. And the, the film makes a very big point of her learning that, you know, your voice is your own and you have to speak in the way that feels truthful to you. And I think that is an incredibly powerful message to give to teens. And the brilliance as well of the film is that it's not a one issue film. It's reflecting so many different things that black teenagers are having to deal with. It's talking about code switching, you know, where you have to change the way that you talk or the way that you express yourself to sit, fit into certain environments. And for Star, she basically has to cleave her identity in two because she's splitting her life up between her home in Garden Heights, which is a working class majority black neighborhood, and her school, which is a wealthy majority white school. And she ends up feeling like she doesn't belong in either world. And so it's dealing with that. It's also dealing with attitudes to mixed race relationships. You know, she has a white boyfriend played by KJ Apa. She's dealing with white friends who act black but won't actually stand by her when she needs them. And she's also worrying about prom, what she's going to wear to prom and what she's going to put on her Tumblr page. And so it's all about putting that together, all of that together in one experience and to put that into the teenage experience, which is so rare for 
a mainstream film. And also the performances are fantastic from Russell Hornsby as a dad, Regina Hall as the mother, and then Amanda Stenberg, who is such a leader for her community, like outside of this film and for her generation, such a voice for her generation. And I think that really bleeds into the character. And so I think this is a film that just speaks so directly and so intelligently to teens. And I think that is a thing to treasure.